Hello again, I'm Zeltic, and today I'm going to be discussing what Zelda Wii U could take from the original. So by now it's pretty clear that Aonuma, yes I can pronounce his name now, wants to take Zelda back to its roots and push Zelda Wii U away from what we've come to associate the series with. I'll play the clip from the January 2013 Nintendo Direct where Aonuma talks about the development goals for The Legend of Zelda Wii U. ゼルダの当たり前を見直すです。このゼルダの当たり前というのは、例えば、シナリオに沿って順番にダンジョンを攻略するという当たり前や、一人で黙々と遊ぶという当たり前など、ここ最近のゼルダで当たり前になってきた
This is something that was true of Link's debut adventure. Zelda 1 throws you straight into the world of Hyrule, after nothing but a brief Star Wars-style text introduction, explaining a basic outline for the plot. You know your vague objective, get the eight pieces of the Triforce of Wisdom, then you're off, go save Zelda. No 15-minute introductory cutscene, no tutorial, no hour-long explanation of the controls in the game world, where to go and what to do. It truly feels like an adventure. There's suddenly a little world behind the thick glass of your CRT television. Your little world. Yours to explore. I feel that Zelda Wii U looks very much like it will go back to the series' roots, with the freedom of exploration. The translated gameplay teaser discussion between Miyamoto and Aonuma has a few interesting lines to go along with this, such as this. Oh wow, he's climbed way up high. Yes. Since this is such a huge world, we're making a number of high places that offer great views. So now you could decide where to go to from here. Right. You can see so far. This is a good place to look around from. And if you see, say, a suspicious looking tower in the distance, you might decide to head there. Right. This really emphasizes the freedom you have in this game. There are no signs of being led anywhere or being pointed. It appears to be simply the player's decision. It seems that 30 years on, now no longer hindered by the 8-bit power of the NES, the Zelda series has finally realized Miyamoto's original vision. Just like this artwork, finally backed by the power of the Wii U, Link truly can climb to the top of a mountain to take a break from the world and simply take in his surroundings and decide where next to head to. The non-linearity of dungeons has also been discussed by series producer I.G. Aonuma. In fact, completing dungeons in a certain order was one of the two conventions that he specifically mentioned he was going to attempt to lay aside for this title, to create a fresh experience. It's not hard to guess where I'm going with this. The first game. Zelda 1 was incredibly non-linear. There was a series of dungeons, yes, but you could complete them in any order. If. Upon exploring the fields of Hyrule, you happen upon a dark labyrinth crawling with all sorts of monsters. You can go straight in and begin the slaughter. You don't have to wait, for the most part, until you have a specific item or you have unlocked a new area of the map. It's your adventure in your world. Linking in with the theme of the world being yours, Zelda 1 is very good at doing this. Hyrule really feels like your own kingdom. The overworld is literally bristling with secrets. Some admittedly confusingly well hidden, I mean, what the fuck. And finding these secrets out for yourself is really rewarding. It's like finding a cave in the countryside near your house. It doesn't feel like it's a part of a game, part of a story. It feels like something you've discovered in your own world. A secret which you can pass on to others, or if you like, you can keep the areas you know hidden. A secret to everybody. This is something I feel is lacking in games today. I appreciate the completionist attitude. But I do wish there were some better hidden secrets in games, optional extras that really feel like a hidden treasure. An example of this is the private oasis in Wind Waker. When my little brother and I played it as kids, I knew the map square where the private oasis was located, and announced it as my island as I'd discovered it. We didn't know it was necessary for the game's completion, we just saw it as an awesome little paradise amidst the vast open sea. Perhaps experiences like this are why Wind Waker is my favourite game, I don't know. So in summary, from what IG Onuma has said, I truly hope that we do see, with Zelda Wii U, a game that goes back to the series' roots in exploration and non-linearity. A vast overworld riddled with secrets that, as Miyamoto said, could cause you to forget what your goal is because you're doing other things on the side. I personally hope that with Zelda Wii U, the Zelda team create the game that Miyamoto envisioned back in 1986. After 30 years of some of the highest rated games ever, it's time to revisit the original goals of the series, as I believe they still hold up today. Thanks for watching guys, if you like this please give it a like and subscribe and leave in the comments any ideas you have for future videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, I'm Zeltic and I've been joined today by Andy from McIntyre Productions, a link to his channel will be on the screen, goodbye.